Oberon's chapel Robert Herrick away enhanced with glass and beads there is, that to the chapel leads, whose structure, for his holy rest, is here the Halcyon's curious nest, into the witch who looks, shall see his temple of idolatry, where he of Godheads has such store, as Rome's pantheon had not more. His house of Remondus he calls, girt with small bones, instead of walls. First in a niche, more black than jet, his idol cricket there is set. Then in a polished oval by there stands his idol beetle fly. Next, in an arch, akin to this, his idol canker seated is. Then in a round, is placed by these his golden god, Canthrides. So that where'er ye look, ye see no capital, no cornice free, or freeze, from this fine frippery. Now this the fairies would have known, theirs is a mixed religion, and some have heard the elves that call part pagan, part papistical. If unto me all tongues were granted, I could not speak the saints here painted. Saint Tit, Saint Nit, Saint Is, Saint Idis, who gainst Mab's state place here right is. Saint Willow this wisp, of no great bigness, but, alias, called here Fatuzinus. Saint Frip, Saint Trip, Saint Phil, Saint Philly. Neither those other saint ships will I here go about for to recite their number, almost infinite, which, one by one, here set down are in this most curious calendar. First, at the entrance of the gate, a little puppet priest doth wait, who squeaks to all the comers there, favor your tongues, who enter here. Pure hands bring hither, without stain. A second pulls, hence, hence, profane. Hard by, e this shell of half a nut, the holy water there is put. A little brush of squirrel's hairs, composed of odd, not even pears, stands in the platter, or close by, the purge the fair family. Near to the altar stands the priest, there offering up the holy grist. Duking in mood and perfect tense, with much good do single quote him reverence. The altar is not here for square, nor in a form triangular, nor made of glass, or wood, or stone, but of a little transverse bone, which boys and buckled children call, playing for points and pins, cockle whose linen drapery is a thin, sub-pipe ill, and ductile codling skin, which o'er the board is smoothly spread with little seal-work damasked. The fringe that so combines it, too, is spangle work of trembling dew, which, gently gleaming, makes a show, like frost work glittering on the snow. Upon this featureless board doth stand something for shoe bread, and at hand, just in the middle of the altar, upon an end, the fairy psalter, graced with the trout fly's curious wings, which serve for wadget rebonings. Now, we must know, the elves are led right by the rubric, which they read, and if report of them be true, they have their text for what they do. A, and their book of canons too. And, as Sir Thomas Parson tells, they have their book of articles. And if that fairy knight not lies they have their book of homilies. And other scriptures, that design a short, but righteous discipline. The basin stands the board upon to take the free oblation. A little pin dust, which they hold more precious than we prize our gold. Which charity they give to many poor of the parish, if there's any. Upon the ends of these neat rails, hatched with the silver light of snails, the elves, in formal manner, fix two pure and holy candlesticks, in either which a tall small bent burns for the altar's ornament. For sanctity, they have, to these, their curious copes and surplices of cleanest cobweb, hanging by in their religious vestry. They have their ash pants and their brooms, to purge the chapel and the rooms. Their many mumbling mass priests here, and many a dapper chorister. Their ushering vergers here likewise, their canons and their chanteries. Of cloister monks they have Enno, A, and their abbey lovers too, and if their legend do not lie, they much affect the papacy. And since the last is dead, there's hope Elf Boniface shall next be Pope. They have their cups and chalices, their pardons and indulgences, their beads of knits, bells, books, and wax candles, forsooth, and other knacks. Their holy oil, their fasting spittle, their sacred salt here, not a little. Dry chips, old shoes, rags, grease, and bones, beside their fumigations. Many a trifle, too, and trinket, and for what use scarce man would think it. Next then, 
Upon the chanter's side an apple's core is hung up dried, with rattling kernels, which is wrong to call to mourn an even song. The saint, to which the most he prays and offers incense nights and days, the lady of the lobster is, whose foot pays he doth stroke and kiss, and, humbly, chives of saffron brings for his most cheerful offerings. When, after these, he's paid his vows, he lowly to the altar bows, and then he dons the silkworm's shed, like a Turk's turban on his head, and reverently departeth thence, hid in a cloud of frankincense, and by the glowworm's light well guided, goes to the feast that's now provided.